You must have some idea why one of the richest men in the world invited you to his estate. The woman who called just said that Spencer Spendington wanted to offer me a job. A job? What are Garfield and Odie doing in the back seat? Oh, they're playing some sort of game Garfield invented. It's called Name That Sandwich. If you guess what's in the sandwich, you get to eat the sandwich. <laughs> Tuna fish? Nope, sorry, it's roast beef. <laughs> okay, next one. <laughs> Swiss cheese? Nope, sorry. It's chunky style peanut butter and guava jelly with bib lettuce and applewood smoked bacon on toasted date nut bread. <laughs> I know. That was your next guess. It says here Spencer Spendington owns eight mansions, 37 cars, two private jets, the Klopman Diamond, a private zoo. Who owns a private zoo? Well, someone who's very, very rich. Nope, sorry. This one is ham. We have mostly mammals in this section. The birds are over in the east wing. And oh, oh, you know what I just received? A California condor. Those are very rare, aren't they? They sure are. A lot of these animals are very rare. Of course. Eh, what's the point of having something that everybody else has? Liz isn't thrilled about zoos. She thinks some are good, but some imprison animals that ought to be out in the wild. And some don't treat animals very well at all. Here, let's make a little survey. Hey, how's the food in this place? Oh, pretty awful. What little there is of it. Hmm? They don't feed you enough? Life was better when I was in Africa. I just have to say... <laughs> we are all feeling low. We're so far away From the world we know Men came along and brought us here We're in the wrong, wrong hemisphere We don't belong, that should be clear Oh, one, two Open wide. Thanks. Uh, Mr. Spendington, who gets to see these animals uh, besides you? Uh, my friends. Your rich friends. Can I help it if all my friends are rich? Remember this moment, folks. It's the last time on this show you'll see me giving food away. What John means is, does anyone ever get to come in here who isn't rich? Uh, my servants. Oh, and you two. Huh? Come, let me show you the most important exhibit in my entire zoo. Here's a sandwich for you. 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 Oh, man, this guy has way too many penguins. Here's a sandwich for you. 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 Whatever it is, I think it escaped. It's an empty cage reserved for the animal I most want to add to my zoo here, which reminds me. Stella! Get Dinkum on the video phone. 
Right away, Mr. Spendington. Dinkum? As in Dirk Dinkum? Here's a sandwich for you. Here's a sandwich for you. Here's a sandwich for you. <laughs> you have to guess what kind of sandwich it is. Oh. <laughs> Wrong again. Ow. Here's a sandwich for you. Here's a sandwich for you. Here's a sandwich for you. Dirk Dinkum on line nine, Mr. Spendington. <laughs> Dinkum, what do you have to report? Afternoon, Mr. Spendington, sir. Howdy there, Mr. Spendington. <laughs> that was the rotten explorer guy we met up with last season. <laughs> <laughs> I saw that episode. He was so repulsive. You watch my show? Here, have two sandwiches. I'm still hot on the trail of a Mancian white lion for you. A Mancian white lion? One of the rarest, most beautiful animals in the world. There are none in captivity. Don't you worry, Mr. Spindington. Dirk and I, we'll find you one. I'll find him one, Buckley. You drive the vehicle and fetch lunch. Why do I hope no I fetch lunch? Not to offer you. Don't you think I would? Mr. Spindington, you are not going to bring a Manzian white lion here and lock it up in captivity. Oh, I can afford it. I can afford anything. No! I mean, it's an endangered species. There's so few left. Now, I asked you here, Liz, because I need a first-rate veterinarian to take care of my animals here. Name your price. Not interested. Of course you are. Everybody's interested if the money is right. I said, not interested. You will be. You'll think it over and you'll come crawling back. They all do. Come on, Odie. I think we're leaving. Oh, this is the last sandwich. Can you guess what kind it is? Oh, nope, not salami. Hey, I was just kidding. It's salami. <gasps> Boy, they look angry. I wonder how angry they are. What do you think, Liz? I think we ought to fly to Africa and do everything we can to stop Dirk Dinkum from capturing a Manzian white lion and selling it to Spencer Spendington. I was thinking the same thing. Wow, that's pretty angry. I have this friend named Angie who used to work for Dinkum. I'm gonna text her. Landing at Manzi in approximately 20 minutes. That's two zero minutes. Angie says the last few Manzian white lions are in Manzia, so that's obviously where Dinkum is heading. And you say she was as mad as we were about the idea of trapping one? Hmm. <laughs> Madder. You remember Angie? In that long episode where John found his old friend and your first owner, Lyman? <laughs> I think they're running it on the cheap flashback scene channel. Remember, we went down to Franistan to look for Lyman? That's where we first encountered Dirk Dinkum and his worm-like assistant, Angie. That's our tour guide who used to work for Dinkum. She helped us find that creature called the Zabadoo. And when Dinkum ran into the Zabadoo, he got what was coming to him. <laughs> and then some. Remember Angie was so grateful? You remember it now? Uh-huh. Good. Now don't forget, because there will be a quiz. Would you like some gum to chew while we land? It helps to stop your ears from popping. Oh, thank you. I'll take a piece. And I'll take a piece. Mm. And I'll take the rest. <laughs> Are you afraid of Dinkum? He looks pretty tough to me. John Arbuckle? <laughs> scared? <laughs> After what happened to him the last time we met? I'll bet he's too scared to come within a mile of me. <laughs> this is exciting. I don't think I've ever been to Africa before. It's the most mysterious and unexplored of all the continents. They say that Africa is by far... <gasps> oh. oh, John, it's so wonderful to see you. <laughs> John. I John. certainly hope this is Angie. 
<laughs> Liz, Angie. Angie, Liz. Oh, he's adorable, Liz. Uh-huh, he's taken Angie. Huh? It's called jealousy. It's like when I see someone else eating a really large lasagna. <laughs> okay, well, let's uh, get out of this airport, shall we? I have this friend we're going to meet. His name is Armstrong, and he knows where all the Manzi and White Lions are. Remember what I said when I saw Arbuckle getting on the same plane as us, Buckley? I said that guy's gonna lead me right to one of them Mancian white lions. You know, we don't have to do it that way, Dirk. My uncle knows where there's one and Buckley, he... when I want your advice, I'll give it to you. Just drive. and give us the mercury slippers? Thanks for doing the hard work for me. Now all I need is the Lilith one, and the world is mine. <laughs> uh, we've got to get to the one before she does. Well, let's hop to it. Uh, nothing personal. We need a spell to take us to the Hall of Witchdom. Here it is. Hey. Mer, mer, break, break a flash. Getting the hang of this witch business. Soon. They always save the big expensive set for the finale. So, just what is this place again? This is the Hall of Witchdom, the place where the most powerful artifacts are stored. The little wand is somewhere within its thousands of corridors. <laughs> Or she does, but how? If that wand once belonged to Varicella, then it must still carry her yuck, distinct body odor. Odie's pretty good at tracking down nasty smells. Odie, did you get a whiff of Varicella back there? Can you find that smell and lead us to her wand? <laughs> Wow, this is worse than finding your way back to your car at the mall. Oh. 
This is it, boy. In here. It worked. He followed Varicella's scent to the Lilith one. No, he followed Varicella's scent to Varicella. Thanks mostly to you. I have the broom of sorrow. I have the mercury slippers. And having followed you here, I have the Lilith one. Which means I have everything. You can't stop me. No one can stop me. And you remember what happened to her. This is my fault. Don't blame yourself, Abigail. Who can we blame if we don't blame me? Hey, I know this cat named Normal who's handy for that. At last, after all these centuries, I call the Forbidden Moon! <laughs> I can just imagine what it's like on Earth right now. <laughs> yes! Now at last my dream can explode. I turned you into a frog, or maybe a toad. <laughs> there is no place to hide or retreat. I get my revenge, and revenge is sweet. Trapped there inside the book, planning to change the look of the world we knew. As I dreamed I'll do, soon you will stop and stare. Frog people everywhere. Tell each gal and each film. Your new queen's very sober. So go my Joey friend, time for your world to end now. about how to save the world? Nothing. There's nothing. There's no weapon stronger than the Lilith Wand. Stronger than the wand. What was the last thing Mrs. Cauldron said right before she was turned into a statue? The strongest magic doesn't come from a wand, but from the heart, the locket. The locket Aunt Esther wore, the one Varicella threw away. The one forged from the love of their parents? Yes. Odie, Odie, you've been guarding it all this time. Right. Oh. <laughs> oh. What do you think that is? A weapon? Ah. It's not a weapon. It's a replacement card. Uh -huh. To replace the one you lost a thousand years ago! <gasps> ah! What have you done, child? What have you done? <laughs> what have I done? A much needed bit of surgery. You. you've made me. you made me whole again. Thank you. I must undo the damage I have done. <gasps> Whoa! Uh, oh my goodness, what happened? Whatever it is, I don't want it to happen again. Nevermore! Oh. Oh, oh. <laughs> Excuse me, the world? Would you mind saving the world now? Of course, the world. Oh. Oh. 
I don't know what happened, but Garfield must have had something to do with it. You did it, Abigail. You saved the world. I couldn't have done it without all of you. Especially you, Garfield. How can I ever thank you? You could wrap this up. I haven't eaten in this entire story. We can't wrap it up yet. We must celebrate Abigail before the Grand Council of Witches. Will there be refreshments? Plenty of them. Then let the celebration begin. The whole world is as it was before. We have wiped the memories of all on Earth. No one will recall those unfortunate moments when they were all turned into frogs. Yeah, big, fat, hairy deal. Most people on Earth can't remember where they left their car keys. Abigail, please step forward. Your actions violated almost every rule of the School of Witchery and Witchcraft. Worse, you unleashed a great evil and threatened all of mankind. However, you also saved all of mankind by learning the greatest lesson of all, that the heart is stronger than any magic. And so we confer on you the mantle of full fledged witchery. Ah. You made your auntie so proud, Abigail. Evermore! Evermore! Evermore? I learned a new raven word. Look who's back. Bruce, my familiar is back. Oh, I missed you too, boy. And I missed you, sis, although you were a good bookmark. I missed me as well, my sister. And now Abigail and I have like two aunts, for sure. This has all been grand, but uh, the pup and I need to get back. I will send them back. From now on, I use magic only for selfless reasons. Thank you, Garfield. <laughs> and you too, Odie. <laughs> Thank you for everything. Are you ready? Ready as we'll ever be. Oh, and could you send us back to just after John made the pizza? Certainly! Polini! Polini! Odie! <laughs> Barris Cell is no longer filled with hate now. We have a reason to celebrate. This is how the story ends. This is Cauldron and her sister's friend. Earthlings could have been enslaved. Abracadabra, their world is saved. Glad you guys are enjoying your pizza. So, where have you been all day? I don't know. Hmm. I'm feeling kind of strange. I have a frog in my throat or something. Did you... I mean, did he just... Don't worry, Garfield. It'll wear off in about a half an hour. Okay, thanks. <laughs>
This is the story of the pie, the cat, and the bulldog of doom. This is the pie. This is the cat. And this, for reasons that will become apparent, is the bulldog of doom. Especially if you're a cat. One day, Miss Generic Housewife model baked a pie. The aroma began to make its way to surrounding homes. And there's a curious thing about this neighborhood. No matter which way the wind is blowing, the smell of something freshly cooked will always somehow make its way to the nostrils of this cat. <laughs> Uh-oh. Bruno's decided to help himself to that elderly gentleman's lunch. Wow. Even I wouldn't do something that rotten. <laughs> Bruno! What are you doing eating here? Why aren't you over on Crestview Avenue? That's where I'm heading. What's over on Crestview Avenue? You don't know? Oh, nothing. There's nothing going on over there. Uh, I'll see you later. <sighs> What's going on over on Crestview <laughs> Avenue? Like I said, nothing. No, there's no free all-you-can-eat pancakes festival. Ooh, is a free all-you-can-eat pancakes festival? Who told you? Uh, why am I bothering with this crummy sandwich when I could be eating all the pancakes I could eat? Yeah. Here, you can eat this. Pancakes, here I come! <laughs> Bruno's not the brightest character on the series. If there were free pancakes over on Crestview Avenue, do you think I'd be here? <laughs> hey. My lunch! Somebody stole my lunch! <laughs> oh, thank you, kitty cat. You deserve a reward. <laughs> Would you like half a peanut butter and chicken salad sandwich? No. And it was about then that the aroma of freshly baked pie reached the cat's nostrils. That smell. I know that smell. I know that smell. I love that smell. Pie! Pie. Oh, wonderful pie. Apple pie, peach pie, cherry pie, boysenberry pie, coconut pie. Any berry pie. Pie with ice cream on the top, pie with ice cream on the side. But it didn't really matter what kind of pie it was. Scientific testing has shown that this particular cat will eat just about anything. Uh, tuna sandwich on whole wheat bread. <laughs> he eats it. Shrimp chow mein with crispy noodles. <laughs> he eats it. Bean burrito with a side of nachos. <laughs> he eats it. Meat lasagna. <laughs> he eats it. And the plate it's on. Two three-minute eggs and home fries. He eats it. Uh, chicken fried steak. All in all, he eats it. they tested 7,423 foods that afternoon. He eats it. And discovered that the only ones the cat would not eat were... Anchovies on pizza, most healthy foods, anything that resembles yogurt, John's meatloaf, a peanut butter and chicken salad sandwich, and raisins. Raisins? Yuck. You know how they make raisins? They take gravel and they soak it until it wrinkles. This is useful information, Dr. Whipple. Thanks. We'll be heading home now. Oh, and on the way home, could we stop for hot dogs? And so the cat followed the wonderful aroma all the way to the house in the next block. Lemon meringue pie, chocolate meringue pie, meringue meringue pie. It was there that he found the source of the wonderful aroma. Pie. Unfortunately, he saw something else there. It was... <laughs> the Bulldog of Doom! Yes, between the cat and the wonderful smelling pie, there stood but one obstacle, the Bulldog of Doom. The cat looked at the pie. Then he looked at the bulldog. Then he looked at the pie again. Then he looked at the bulldog again. Then the pie, then the bulldog, then the pie, then the bulldog. And finally, he came to the conclusion that any sane, pie-loving cat would reach. I'm giving up. No, I'm not. I can't leave that delicious smelling, beautiful looking, whatever kind of pie it is pie, there uneaten like that. I must brave the bulldog of doom. Yeah. 
go to sleep, my baby, my baby, my baby. Go to sleep, my baby. I'm going to eat the pie. I'm almost to the pie. I'm almost to my demise. No, no, stop! I don't want pie. Nice food, I can do. Well, now you know why he's called the Bulldog of Doom. If I know me, I'm gonna go after that pie, and the Bulldog of Doom will do me. How can I stop me? The cat thought and thought and thought, and finally he had an idea. Hey, in John's old magic act, he had a pair of handcuffs. As ideas go, it wasn't a very good one. But sometimes a bad idea is huh? better than no idea at all. All right now, Odie. Do you understand what I'm doing here? Uh-huh. <laughs> Look, it's very simple. Over on the next block, there's pie. I do not want to go over there and try to get the pie. And do you know why I don't want to go over there and try and get the pie? Because the pie is being guarded by the Bulldog of Doom. To prevent me from being tempted to go over and get the pie at the expense of my life, I have handcuffed myself to this post here. And here, is the only key. Uh-huh. Okay, I want you to keep this key for me. Hold on to it, and no matter how much I ask for it, do not, I repeat, do not give it back to me. Is that clear? <laughs> Wait a minute. It's a pie. I'm Garfield. I ought to be able to figure out a way to get my paws on that pie. Odie, bring me the key. Ta-da! <laughs> Odie, I told you not to give it to me no matter what I said. Huh? Do you want me to be doomed by the Bulldog of Doom? <laughs> then don't give me the key. <laughs> <sighs> I wonder what kind of pie it is. Maybe rhubarb pie, or pecan pie, or pumpkin pie. <gasps> what if it's pumpkin pie? Oh, I'll bet it's pumpkin pie. Warm, creamy, delicious pumpkin pie. I don't care if there's a bulldog of doom guarding it. Odie, bring me the key. Hurry. Aren't you hearing a word of what I said? No matter what I say, no matter how I beg or order you, do not, I repeat, do not give me back the key. Do you understand, Odie? Now. Temptation won't make me go after that pie and get doomed by the Bulldog of Doom. Here, I'm safe. There he is. I'm not safe. Free all you can eat pancake festival, huh? It's the Bruno of Doom. I'd better go hide in another country. Oh, the handcuffs. Odie, Odie, I need the key to these handcuffs. No, I know I said not to give them to me, but give them to me. Uh, uh, uh. Odie, if you don't give me that key, Bruno's gonna flood me like for free all you can eat pancakes. <laughs> what do you mean you're too smart to fall for that? He's here, Odie. Uh, uh, uh. Free all you can eat pancakes on Crestview Avenue, huh? Did I say Crestview Avenue? I meant uh, uh, Viewcrest Avenue. They have pancakes there and syrup and all <laughs> Would you believe free waffles? <laughs> oh, <help>. Odie! <laughs> now you give me the key. Great. Now I'll probably be tempted to go after that pie, and then the Bulldog of Doom will do the same thing to me. It was at that moment that the cat had what seemed like a pretty good idea. It was that great kind of idea that can solve two problems at the same time. In this case, the two problems were the big cat bully and the severe lack of pie. Pie? Oh no, I'm not falling for another one of your tricks, Garfield. No, really, it's pie. Can't you smell it? Now that you mention it. 
I'm still not sure what kind of pie it is. Might be coconut cream, might be cinnamon pear, might be a uh, chicken pot pie. Hey, it is pie. If I know anything, I know when there's a pie. So, I was thinking we could split it and- We ain't splitting nothing. I'm taking the whole thing for myself. Uh, okay, if you say so, Bruno. Oh, Bruno. Uh, did I remember to warn you about the Bulldog of Doom? Bulldog of Doom? Uh, no, you didn't say anything about any Bulldog of Doom. Oh, sorry. I forgot to mention there's a Bulldog of Doom. Bulldog of Doom? The cat was very proud of his cleverness as he made his way to the now unguarded pie. But he had another surprise. Oh, did you smell the pie I baked, little cat? Mm. Would you like some of it? Well, here. You take the whole thing. I'll bake another. It's the only kind of pie I know how to make. Raisin pie. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, by any chance, is that half a peanut butter and chicken salad sandwich still available? Hey, cat's gotta eat. 